Well, welcome to Grace City Church. We're so glad that you are here with us as we continue our series, Feel Free, which is all about how to experience freedom in your emotions. And so in this series, we've been talking about how to manage, control, and even change your emotions. But today we're going to kind of be switching gears in this series. We're going to be now focusing on the mind because feeling free actually starts in your mind, not your emotions. You know, Harry Houdini was a famed escape artist. He claimed that you put him in any jail cell and he'll break out in no time. And he was always able to follow through on this promise. But one time, things didn't go as planned. And so he walked into the cell in his street clothes. They closed the door behind him. And he pulled out a skinny piece of flexible metal from his pants and proceeded to uh, try and pick the lock. But 30 minutes later, he hadn't gotten anywhere. An hour later, nothing. At at this point, he is frustrated and sweaty because it usually only takes him just a couple minutes to pick this lock. Two hours later, still can't pick the lock. And so finally, he just gives up, collapses to the floor in failure. And then he leans up against, as he sits on the ground, leans up against the prison door and it slowly moves open. The door was never locked to begin with. He was trying to pick the lock on a door that wasn't locked. And because he thought it was locked, he stayed trapped in that prison when all he had to do was push the door open and walk out. The only place that door was locked was in his mind, yet it kept him from experiencing freedom. See, feeling free starts in your mind. If you don't think free, you'll never feel free. In fact, it's a a, a scientific fact that after you think a thought for 30 seconds, you have 30 seconds to deal with that thought because after 30 seconds, that thought is followed by a feeling. And then once that feeling sets in, you have to try and fight against the thought and the feeling. Now, of course, we've seen in this series that you can resist negative emotions, but it takes a lot of work. It's much easier to deal with that thought before it becomes an emotion. See, what you do with your mind matters. What you think matters more than you think. See, many people believe that what they think isn't nearly as important as what they do, that how I behave is more important than what I do. But what you think impacts your life more than you realize, because if you think a thought for 30 seconds, it's followed by a feeling, and feelings lead to choices. Choices create habits. Your habits form your character, and your character determines your destiny. And it all starts with a thought. Proverbs 4, 23 says this, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. So your life is shaped by your thoughts, and it starts by shaping your feelings first, which means you can't think one way and feel another. You can't think negative thoughts or feel positive emotions any more than you can plant apple seeds and expect oranges to grow, right? You can't feel joyful without thinking thoughts of joy. You can't feel peaceful without thinking thoughts of peace. And in the same way, you can't be worried without thinking anxious thoughts. You can't be afraid without thinking peaceful thoughts because your thoughts create your feelings. And so if you think about positive, good things, you're going to have positive emotions. But if you think about negative things and how horrible your life is and how nobody loves you and nobody cares about you and nobody has it as bad as you, how do you think you're going to feel? Terrible, right? Because you can't experience positive emotions with a negative thought life, right? Your emotions are merely a reflection of your thoughts. There was a a minister who was traveling to speak at another pastor's church, and he kind of stayed at the pastor's house in the guest bedroom. And so when he arrived at the house, it was late at night, and, you know, he had a quick bite to eat and then went to bed because he was exhausted. But he was awakened in the middle of the night to hear this strange noise coming from the corner of the room. And he immediately sat up in bed, but it was so dark he couldn't see anything. But when his eyes finally adjusted to the light, he saw this large dark figure in the corner of the room going, and he knew immediately that it was a demon. And so he starts rebuking this thing, commanding it to go in Jesus' name, and he's praying against this thing. And finally, after a few minutes of prayer, it it stops moving and it stops making that noise, and he goes back to sleep. But then about 20 minutes later, this thing appears again, starts moving and making this noise. And so he starts praying it against it again. He's pleading the blood of Jesus, confessing the word. He's doing everything he knows to do to get this thing to leave. And finally, after a few minutes of prayer, it stops. 
But then about 20 minutes later, it started again. And so this continued off and on all night long, about every 20 minutes or so. So he's up all night terrified uh, 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 of this figure in the corner of the room. Well, when the sun finally started to rise and the first rays of light entered the room, he could see clearly. And what he'd been praying against all night wasn't a demon. It was a black rain jacket hanging on a coat rack. This, this, coat, was, this, this uh, uh, coat was directly under the air conditioning vent. And so whenever the air cut on every 20 minutes, it would blow on the jacket, creating that rustling noise. And so he was up all night long, gripped with fear, rebuking a raincoat. See, your thoughts create your feelings, even if the things that you're thinking about aren't true. They still create real emotions. Oh, this is so good. You have to get this. Your thoughts, even if the things you're thinking about aren't real, aren't even close to being true, they still create real emotions. And so it feels real to you, even though it is 100% false. This is why it's so important for us to think about the right things. You know, there are a lot of things that get lost in translation between England and the United States. And I'm sure it's difficult for them to listen to what we've done to the Queen's English. But it is uh, uh, just as difficult to understand them because, you know, they have, you know, words kind of mean different things there. For an example there, an apartment is called a flat. An elevator is called a lift. A shopping cart is called a push trolley. We throw our garbage in a trash can. They put it in the bin. A diaper is called called a nappy, potato chips are called crisps, and french fries are called chips. I know, it's all really confusing. But, but there is one phrase that I actually prefer in the UK over to what we have here in America. Like, for example, if you're on like a subway and there's kind of like a low overhang uh, uh, and you might bump your head on it, we would put up a sign that says, watch your head. But the signs on their subway say, mind your head which when you think about it, makes a little more sense because you can't watch your head because your eyes are mounted on it, but you can be mindful to duck so you don't bump your head, right? See, we need to be mindful of our thoughts. I would say we need to watch our thoughts, but you can't watch them because they're invisible. So we need to be mindful of our thoughts, right? You need to think about what you're thinking about. Next time you're feeling depressed, think about what you're thinking about and you'll find the source of that depression. Next time you're feeling guilty, think about what you're thinking about and you'll find the source of that guilt. Next time you're feeling envy, think about what you're thinking about and you'll find the source of that emotion, right? We have to be mindful of our thoughts, which isn't an easy thing to do. It's easier said than done because the average person has 60,000 thoughts go through their head in a day. And according to researchers, 48,000 of those thoughts are negative, right? 80% of the thoughts that go through our head in a given day are negative. See, your mind is like a credit card. And every time a negative thought goes through your mind, it's like swiping the credit card. Nobody likes you. Swipe. You don't have the right clothes, swipe. If only you looked like her, swipe. You're never gonna break free, swipe. You're an idiot, you're stupid, you can't do anything right. You're a screw up, you're a failure. You'll never get your life together. Swipe, swipe, swipe. Every time we believe one of those thoughts, it's like swiping a credit card and it'll cost you. Now you might not notice it at first, just like when you shop with the credit card, right? When you swipe that card, that money doesn't leave your bank account, but guess what happens at the end of the month? you get the bill, right? And this is a bill that you have to pay, not like our national debt, which we are never going to pay back, (laughs) right? This week, our national debt surpassed $30 trillion. That's incredible, right? When I was writing uh, the the book for this series, uh, which should be out in, in about two weeks, I was writing a book for it back in 2021. Our national debt was $25 trillion. When I went to uh, send this off for its final edit before it went to print, the national debt was $27 trillion. When I went over my notes for the message this morning, on Monday morning, the national debt was $28.9 trillion. And now, one week later, we already surpassed $30 trillion. And it seems like every election year, right, they're always talking about some candidates like, all right, we're going to pay down the national debt. 
come on, man. We ain't paying that down. You don't get the $30 trillion in debt and think that you're going to pay it back, right? That was like never even an option. It is impossible to get to $30 trillion in debt thinking you're going to pay somebody back. That's the kind of money you take from a loan shark when you know that you're going to die next week, <laughs> right? Everyone's always talking about, oh, everyone's worried about China. Oh, no, I'm worried about China. You know, America's in trouble. We owe China $1.2 trillion. America's in trouble. No, China's in trouble because they lost $1.1 trillion, right? Because we're never paying them back. America's fine. China is out over a trillion dollars because there are just some bills that you are never going to pay back. But when it comes to the bill from your thought life, that's not an option. You always have to pay. It'll cost you your joy, your hope, your freedom, and your peace. And when your account hits a negative balance, the only thing you're left with is worry, depression, fear, hopelessness, and a host of other negative emotions because you always have to pay. This is why we have to be mindful of our thoughts. You have to control your thoughts because if you don't control your thoughts, they will cost you your freedom. Now, there are many people that don't think that they can control their thoughts, but you can't. Over and over again in scripture, God tells us to manage our thoughts, to fix our thoughts, to focus on these things. And so if God tells us to do this, that means we have the ability to do it. You have the power to control your thoughts, right? Martin Luther, the reformer, uh, leader of the Protestant Reformation said this, you cannot keep birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from building a nest in your hair. I love that. You can't keep birds from flying over your head. He's referring to thoughts when he said this, right? You can't keep birds from flying over your head any more than you can keep certain thoughts from coming into your mind because you realize not every thought you have is your thought. There are some thoughts the enemy puts into your mind. The, the, the Bible says that Satan put it into the heart of Judas to betray Jesus. So, so that wasn't his idea. That was actually Satan's idea, and he ran with it because not all thoughts that you think are your thoughts. Sometimes the enemy puts thoughts into your mind. Sometimes other people put thoughts into your mind. And sometimes thoughts just spontaneous, spontaneously come from our own sinful humanity. And you have no control over those thoughts any more than you have control over the birds that are flying in the air. But you can determine whether or not those birds are going to make a nest in your hair, right? You can control whether or not you're going to continue to think about those thoughts. And see, the thoughts that you continue to think about over and over again is what the Bible calls the meditation of your heart. Last week, we talked about the difference between the two kinds of thoughts that we have. We have head thoughts and heart thoughts. And head thoughts are those kind of commonplace thoughts that go through our minds throughout the day, and those thoughts are easily forgotten, right? You can't remember what you had for lunch on Monday because those thoughts are easily forgotten. But heart thoughts are different. Heart thoughts have to do with what you meditate on, what you continue to think about. And it's those thoughts that determine your reality and create your mood and emotions, right? As we saw, Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So the thoughts that you embrace to be true at a heart level define your life. There's only one thing that scripture says defines your being, and that is your thought life. Your thoughts define your life and determine the emotions that you feel. And so what happens is that we feel, you know, all these negative emotions. We don't have joy. We don't have peace. We're not happy. And so we set out to change our circumstances. We think, you know what my problem is? My problem is this city. I just need to get out of this city. I'm so sick of this city. I need to move. And so they leave the city. Come on. How many of you have ever had somebody say that about Albany? Okay, two hands are going up. Y'all lying. All right. Every friend I've ever had that has left this place talks about how horrible this city is, and that's why I need to move. I just need to get out of here. So they move to a new city, but guess what? Wherever you go, there you are, right? So you're in a new city feeling the exact same way, right? Because you can still be a negative, complaining, miserable person eating at Cheesecake Factory as you can't eat at the Golden Corral, right? <laughs> If you ain't happy at one, you ain't going to be happy at the other. Now, one tastes a whole lot better than the other, but it ain't going to affect your emotions, right? So you think, oh, my problem is my boss. Then you get a new job. And so you get a new job with a new boss. My, my problem is my house. It's too small. So you get a bigger house. My problem is my spouse. So you get a new spouse, right? We change everything that is around our lives, hoping that it'll change the way we feel about ourselves. But the problem isn't out there. It's in here. You have to change your thinking before you can experience change in your life. And if you change your thinking, it'll change your emotions. It'll change the way you feel. And it will even change your circumstances because your thoughts become your reality, which means if you are going up in life, you're going up head first. 
And if you're going down in life, you're going down head first. If you are happy, you are happy in your mind first. If you are sad, you are sad in your mind first. If you are stuck, you are stuck in your mind first because your life follows your thoughts. And if you can get your mind unstuck, your life will follow. If you want to move your life in the right direction, you have to move in your mind first because wherever you go in life, you are going there head first. So whenever you experience a negative emotion, don't focus on trying to change the emotion. Focus on changing the thoughts that created that emotion. And if you change your thinking, your emotions will follow because your emotions are simply a derivative of your thoughts. Nothing changes in your emotions until you change the way you think, which means the starting place for emotional health and freedom is not your emotions, it's your mind. You cannot have peace in your emotions until you have peace in your thoughts. You cannot have joy in your life until you have joy in your thinking. You cannot feel hopeful about the future until you think positive thoughts about your future. If you want to feel free, you have to think free. And if you change the way you think, it'll change the way you feel. Have you noticed that like job titles don't really explain what people do anymore, right? Like it used to be a job title described the job that you were performing, right? It, it was really simple, but, but now companies have created these job titles, right? And, and they sound really glamorous to make the work sound more important and significant than it really is. But it, it, it's really hard to actually try to figure out what these people do. And so I, I pulled a couple actual job titles. These, these, are, these are real job titles. Let's see if you can guess what these people actually do. All right, first one. Environmental maintenance officer. Garbage man. Yeah, that's right. Somebody got that. That's the garbage man right there. All right, next one. Director of life enrichment. That's organizing bingo night at the senior center, right? That's what, that's, that, was, that was the job title for that role. Drain surgeon. Plumber, that's right. Yeah, plumber. It's like, what are you? I'm a surgeon. I'm like, oh, what are you? Heart, brain. Well, pipes, you know, that's what I, that's what I do. All right, eviction technician. It's a bouncer at a club. That's right. A bouncer at a club is an eviction technician, right? Transparent wall maintenance engineer. Window cleaner. That's right. Yeah, it's a window cleaner right there. And my next one, underwater ceramic technician. Dishwasher. That's right. Dishwasher right there. <laughs> Washing dishes. All right. Last one here. Regional director of imports and exports. Drug dealer. These are all real job titles, besides that last one. I made that last one up myself. All right. <laughs> if you're a drug dealer, I would probably go with that one on a resume there, if you would there. But you know, companies, they don't tell people what they actually do anymore. They just make up these job titles to make the work sound more glamorous than it really is. But you already have a really important job. In fact, the most important job that you possess is the director of neurological operations. That's just another way of saying it's your job to manage your mind, right? It's your job to change the way you think. This isn't something that somebody else can do for you. This isn't even something that God will do for you. You know, they're asking, oh, God, renew my mind. No, God cannot renew your mind. He will not renew your mind. It's your responsibility. Over and over again in Scripture, God tells us to manage our minds, to change our thoughts. He will not do it for us, and nobody else can do it for you either. It's your job. You know, in the book of Lamentations. It was written by the prophet Jeremiah. At this point in Israel's history, they'd completely turned their backs on God. They walked away from him and his ways and just did whatever they felt like doing. And so Jeremiah's message was turn back to God. But they ignored Jeremiah and they continued to walk away from God. And whenever you walk away from God, you walk away from his blessing and his protection. And that's when the Babylonians came in, conquered them, destroying the city of Jerusalem along with the temple. And so Jeremiah's life as he knew it was over. And so the book of Lamentations is Jeremiah lamenting over the loss and destruction that they suffered. And in chapter 3, verses 1 through 20, Jeremiah describes how he's feeling. And, and I'm, I want to, I'm not going to read all 20 verses because they're really long, but I do want to just highlight and show you a, a couple of sections so that you can actually hear how he's feeling, right? So you can understand his emotional state. This is what he said. 
in just 20 verses. He said, I feel like I'm walking in darkness, like my bones have been crushed. Bitterness and hardships surround me. I feel trapped in a prison that I can't escape, like I'm being weighed down with heavy chains, like my heart has been pierced with an arrow. I have no peace, no comfort, no joy, and no hope. Jeremiah is definitely in his feels, right? He is in a very dark place emotionally. This is textbook depression right here. But I want you to notice how he gets out of this place of depression and hopelessness. In verse 21, he said this, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His love never fails. His mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. See, Jeremiah was thinking about all the terrible things that had happened to him that could have been avoided, all the loss that they suffered, but then he changed his thinking. Instead of thinking about everything that was wrong, he started to think about the goodness of God. He remembered God's love and God's mercy. He remembered God's faithfulness, that even when we fail, he never fails. His love never gives up on us. His mercies are new every morning, and it was this change in his thinking that brought him out of the pit of depression and into a place of freedom. When he changed his thinking, his emotions changed, right? Because if you want to change the way you feel, you have to change the way you think. And if you change your thinking, your emotions will change just like Jeremiah's. How did he get out of depression? He said, this I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It was his thinking that brought him into a place of hope. And if you change your thinking, the same thing can happen in your life. And so this change of thinking is what the Bible calls renewing your mind. Romans 12, one through two says this, therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. See, transformation in your life doesn't happen by willpower, self-effort, or trying harder. Transformation takes place when we change our minds. Nothing changes in your life until you change the way you think. See, we want God to change our circumstances. We want God to remove our problems and get rid of every negative emotion. But God is more interested in changing your mind. Because even if God was to change your circumstances, solve every problem, and get rid of every negative emotion, it's only a matter of time before you find yourself right back in the exact same place, feeling the exact same way, because your thoughts create your reality, right? Your, your thoughts created the situation that you find yourself in. So if God was to remove all the external things without changing your mind, you'd end up right back in the exact same place. It's only a matter of time. This is why God is more interested in changing your mind than he is your circumstances in your emotions. Because when your mind is renewed, your emotions take care of themselves. When your mind is renewed, your circumstances begin to take care of themselves. That word renew means to renovate. Or, you know, when you renovate a house, you take out all the, you know, old carpet, right? And you put in new hardwood floors, right? You, you knock down walls to create that open concept. You take out the old cabinets and put in new cabinets, hopefully not Ikea cabinets, but nicer ones. And you put them in there, right? You, you, you get rid of all the old fixtures and appliances and replace them with new ones. You put fresh paint on the walls. When, when you renovate a house, you take out all the old stuff and you put in something new. And that's exactly what you do when you renew your mind. It means to get rid of the old, outdated, faulty thinking and replace it with God's thoughts, God's truth, and God's promises. And when you renew your mind, your emotions take care of themselves. When you get rid of those negative, old, outdated, faulty thoughts and you replace them with God's thoughts, what he thinks about you, his truth, what he says about your life and his promises that he has for your life. When you renew your mind to those things, your emotions take care of themselves. If you guys would please bow your heads, close your eyes. If you're 
here today and you don't have a relationship with God, I want to give you the opportunity to enter into that relationship with him. You know, all those people that were getting baptized today, baptism is the, the, the symbolic act of what happens in the moment of salvation. See, when people go under the water, it signifies leaving the old life behind and coming out of the water experiences, it symbolizes the resurrection, the new life that we have in Jesus Christ. And that transformation, that leaving behind of the old and becoming that new person that he created you to be, it starts when you accept him into your life, when you ask him to come into your life to forgive you and make you new. And so by putting your trust in him and what he did on the cross, you can be made new. You can experience a new life, a fresh start, a clean slate when you put your faith and trust in Jesus and what he did on the cross through the resurrection for you. And so if you're here today and you're ready to make that decision, every head bowed, every eyes closed, water baptism is the public declaration of that decision, but this is just a private moment between you and God. And so if you're here today and you're ready to make that decision, I just wanna pray for you right where you're at in your seat. So if that's you, would you just lift your hand up in the air so I know who I'm praying for today? Just slip your hand up in the air. Slip your hand up. Say, yes, today I want to surrender my life to him. Thank you. Thank you. I see those hands. Thank you. Anyone else today? Thank you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for those who lifted their hands just to say, God, I need you in my life. God, I thank you for the miracle of salvation. As they trust in you, the old is gone, the new has come. God, you've forgiven them of all their sins, past, present, and future, that you're not holding their mistakes against them, but God, you've given them a fresh start and a clean slate. God, I pray that you would fill them with your love, your joy, your peace, God, that they would experience the reality that that all things are made new in their life and that you are now living inside of them, changing and transforming them from the inside out. God, I pray that you would fill them with your spirit and empower them to overcome the challenges that they're up against. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we put our hands together for those who made decisions to follow Jesus? We are so... Excited for you and that decision that you made. We'd love for you to stop by our information desk, which is right outside these doors. We just want to give you this book called Fresh Start to help you get started in this new journey. If you guys would please stand your feet. I want to pray over you. And uh, when I finish praying over you, if you're here today and you need prayer for anything at all, our prayer team is here up front ready to pray with you and believe God for anything that you need prayer for in your life, right? We don't have to carry our burdens by ourselves, right? We are part of the church that community, the family of God. And so if you're here and there's something going on in your life, don't leave this place today without having somebody pray for you and believe God with you for what he wants to do in your life, in your family. Let's pray. Father, I pray that right now, God, we'd be able to, God, identify, God, those, those, those thoughts, God, that are creating these negative cycles and these negative emotions that we are experiencing in our lives, that as we audit our thoughts, Holy Spirit, you would give us your thoughts, your truth and your promises to replace the lies. God, that we would stop trying to focus on changing externals to experience love, joy, and peace. And God, that we would begin the hard work, the long work of renewing our minds so that we can experience transformation. God, we pray for those who've been trying to change and remove and overcome bad habits and behaviors through willpower, through effort, through trying harder and rededications and promises. But God, that they would begin to be able to discover and discern, God, the the thought patterns that have led to these areas of bondage so that they can think free and feel free in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, hey, thank you so much for being here. Have a fantastic Sunday. And if you need prayer, we are here to pray with you. Have a fantastic Sunday.